So on the control panel here, we have a set of gauges, but they're all labeled to tell me what they do. So here we have open and close. What are we opening and closing? Primarily what this operates is a butterfly valve on the bottom of this. It's pneumatically controlled to make it easy for you so you don't have to wind a big gate valve open and closed. So this particular switch here enables me to vacuum, uh, evacuate what the vacuum appropriates in this particular receiver. So that's basically what it is. It's a receiver with a conical shape. The conical shape allows the fines or whatever you vacuumed up to, to form in the bottom of this particular unit. And you can just see there, the bottom of the, the um, pneumatic valve, that opens and closes that gate. So, to operate the machine, we'd have that closed. And throughout operation, we'd have that closed. So let's have a look here at what this is. Inlet gauge, or inlet pressure. So this tells me what pressure this machine is drawing or receiving from the compressor. So whatever I'm pumping in, this is indicative to what this particular unit is receiving. So what am I looking for in relation to pressure? Well, of course, I need to be up around the 100 mark. No problems at all. If I'm over the 100 mark to 120, that's fine as well. That increment in pressure enables this particular machine to operate at its optimum. So it's important to remember, with a great big hose like this, I need the pressure to make this work the way it should. This other gauge here is operating vacuum, so that gives me a negative pressure. That tells me what the suction is on this. So you know with your vacuum cleaner at home, when you put your hand over the end of the vacuum, you'll feel it draw your hand in. Well that's what this is reading. This is telling me how much it's drawing in, what its drawing capacity is. So of course it's a good ready rector as far as operation is concerned, primarily because if I'm starting to lose pressure, I have two reactions to that. One is my operating vacuum is starting to diminish. So in this, gauge, in this case, the gauge is increase, increasing rather than going backwards. So the further it goes backwards, the more suction it's showing me I've got. But this fellow here, the magnahelic gauge, it gives me pressure differential. So ultimately, ultimately what happens is, if I'm not getting the right vacuum, so the negative pressure, this here is an indication as to where the whole thing sits in equilibrium between the pressure differentiation between vacuum and inlet pressure and my suction pressure. So all of those parameters are inclusive in those two gauges. So it's relatively easy to operate, primarily because I can come along and have a look at the magnahelic gauge and go, oh, okay, I've got a pressure differentiation. What is my vacuum pressure? So if the vacuum pressure is good, the magnahelic gauge is telling me there's something else going on here. In this particular machine, I have four filter cartridges four large ones situated inside this vessel. So the whole idea of those filters is to collect any dust so it's not exhausted out through these particular venturis. There's two of them at the back. So as it draws the material through, be it good abrasive, dust, dirt, whatever, as it's drawn through, it's held within this chamber but also the filters facilitate the exhaust. And when I say facilitate, what they're doing is they're grabbing the dust, excessive dust, fines, and filtering it before they're exhausted out these particular exhaust stacks or venturis. Now on the top of this particular machine, we have some valves. They're called pulse valves or Goyen valves. So what this machine is also doing is via a, an airline that's around the other side that I'll show you momentarily. They are pulsing in reverse. So what they're doing to the filters, the filters are a round shape like this. So the pulse is in the center of the filter. So periodically on a timer, the pulse will reverse the air back through the filter and the filter will actually go <laughs> So what that does is that expands or dispenses with the excessive dust that's caught within the filter pleats. So these filters are a specific filter primarily designed for this type of unit. So it has a capacity to grab the dust within this chamber and pull it towards it. So 
eventually the filter will clog. So the Goyen valve or pulse valve will dispense of that excess and drops down into the bottom of the machine. And that's doing that all day long. They're set on a timer so they do it periodically during the course of the day. And they will need air as well. So not only does this require air, but also those pulse valves on the top of this machine to facilitate the appropriate air to pulse those filters during the course of the day. So each filter has its own Goyen or pulse valve. So the best part about it is, ready Rechner, I can walk up and say I've lost suction, what's the story? You'll see increments of this increasing and you'll also see the reduction in the suction. So the negative pressure is reducing. So as far as those two variations, it gives me an indication that either the pulse is not working, well yes I've got air over it, or alternatively, this receiver could be full. So if it's full, what would I do? Basically I'd turn the air off at the back of it, open this valve here, and that'll dump what I've vacuumed into this particular machine. So if I have vacuumed all this material up, and say for example, relative humidity is high during the course of the day, those fines, dust, dirt, whatever I've sucked up, could ultimately coagulate towards the conical section of the pot. They could consolidate. So to eliminate the consolidation of that, we also have a vibrating valve connected onto this bottom of the conical section. So by operating that periodically, what I can do is make the bottom of the conical section shake and loosen those consolidated fines so that I can release them through this butterfly valve at the bottom. So in relation to the operational procedure of this particular unit, it's very clever in the sense that it's a ready reckoner. Have I got enough pressure? Where are the gauges? Is it operating to its optimum? There's one other trap that you can fall into. During transport of your six inch vacuum hose, it can sustain damage that you're totally oblivious to. So normally what I'll do is I'll set this vacuum hose onto the job and then I'm, what I can do is actuate this machine and gauge what the vacuum is by holding that vacuum hose onto the ground, the floor, piece of board, whatever. So what I'm doing is I'm increasing the increments of vacuum so then it has to draw all the way through the hose. So what that does for me before I even start identifies if I've got any breaks, holes, or impervious sections of my vacuum hose. So the vacuum hose has to be in good repair all the way through. So say for example, there was a hole in the vacuum hose and I think, it doesn't really matter, it's just a little hole. Well in essence, that has a dramatic effect on the ability of this machine to perform its total function. So if you have holes in the suction hose, it's just a false economy, primarily because you've got a, a large compressor facilitating the air and it's working overtime because you've got a hole in the hose. So I suggest you either replace the hose or as an intermediate fix, wrap a bit of duct tape around it or cut that piece of hose off and bring a joiner closer. Just common sense, practical approach. But I want you to remember too that with this vacuum system, look at the size of that suction hose, six inches. So the last thing you'd want to do with something like this with the capacity to draw a media, a grit, dirt, all of that stuff. The last thing you'd want to do is put that anywhere near another person or on yourself. Because the health hazard and potential imminent danger of that particular suction hose is paramount. So if I place that suction hose on somebody as a practical joke, you have the potential to actually kill that person immediately because it has the capacity to withdraw that person's internal organs out through their body. So this is a great piece of equipment. I think they're very good in relation to what they, the requirement is to vacuum and clean jobs. But remember, it's very dangerous. So appropriate all, re, all your equipment adequately to do the job, safely to do the job, and ensure that that suction hose is harnessed at the other end so it can't slide around and, and accidentally get somebody on the leg. There is a format 
on how to use this and blast one have a recommended standard operational procedure in relation to this piece of equipment and I suggest or I implore you to read that before you start utilising this piece of equipment. If you run into trouble as far as these gauges are concerned and don't understand after reading the manual, relatively simple, ring the help desk and say look I've got a problem with this, what do I do? So there's somebody at the other end of the phone can sort that out for you. Make sure that this, the utilisation of this machine, coincides with the JSA and the daily check sheets that you may have inaugurated within your work philosophy or methodology. So if you ensure that all that is done prior to utilising this equipment, you've covered all the fundamental basics in relation to its operational procedure. So as far as the operation of this is concerned, we're going to have a look at the back of the machine now to show you where you plug the hose in, the suction hose, the vacuum hose, and give you a, a good understanding of how you place these particular items to facilitate the appropriate operation of this piece of equipment.